What's up everybody, Kinetic here and welcome back to Monster Hunter World. This is a continuation of my series of tutorial videos that I hope encourages players to experiment more with the amazing variety of weapons in the game. Today, we're going to look at the Insect Glaive, a high-flying, technical, but fun weapon that unfortunately most guys I've seen talking about the Insect Glaive fail to break down how to play the weapon without getting confusing or overwhelming in details. So, as per tradition, in this video I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to talk about the core functions and how to quickly get started fighting with the Insect Glaive. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click the like button and leave me your thoughts in the comment section below and subscribe for more videos like this. Let's get started. You've probably seen a video of the Insect Glaive or somebody flying around in your party and thought, wow, that looks like fun, only to equip the weapon yourself and realize it's not as easy as it looks. The Insect Glaive has a certain startup method, a pre-engage ritual as I call it, that doesn't just power up your fighting, but also evolves it. Failing to do so will result in weak performance, frustration, and even failed hunts. To further complicate matters, you have not one but two weapons to manage in the fight and back at the forge. It's easy to feel lost without a guide, so I hope this video helps to clarify the fundamentals that are easy to memorize to get the greater part of the knowledge you need to start using the Insect Glaive with ease. Before we talk about the glaive moves, which I know everybody can't wait to start swinging around with this, I think it's best to start with the Kinsect. The Kinsect is that bug thingy on your arm and it is a vital part to what makes the magic happen in your fights. It powers up your attacks, your defense, can heal you, and even gives you opportunities to deal even more damage against your target. To take advantage of all of these benefits, we need to send out our Kinsect to engage the monster. If you've played a summoner class before in an RPG, it's kind of like that, giving commands to your pet to do your bidding, and what we want most of all before anything is buffs. This is the real power behind the Insect Glaive and takes top priority before you even swing your glaive at the monster. Without these buffs, your performance with your glaive will be as weak as soggy noodles and nowhere near as fun as it can be with the buffs. To get these buffs using your Kinsect, unsheathe your weapon and then press L2 on the controller. This will help you aim at your target and prepare to send your Kinsect out. Once you've lined up, press the triangle button and your Kinsect will fly out and hit the monster in the spot where you aimed. Upon contact, the Kinsect will flash a color of light, letting you know it's gathered a buff for you. To receive the buff from the Kinsect, hold L2 or continue to hold it down and press circle and the bug will fly back to you and give you the buff. Keep in mind the Kinsect I'm using has a high speed rating and you may not have the same speed on your Kinsect. You may have a slower one to start with, that's okay. I'll talk more about how to get faster Kinsects later in the video. There are three main buffs we can get from sending out our Kinsect, and depending on where your Kinsect hits the monster will determine what buff you get. The three main buffs are colored red for attack boost, white for speed, and orange for defense. There's also a green color that represents a small heal. The tricky part here is that to get the buff you want, you have to hit the monster in certain parts right, but the parts you need to hit to get the buffs is different on every monster. <laughs> it's not exactly easy to hit specific parts of the monster either in the heat of a battle, so really, the only way to get good at this is simply through experience with the Kinsect in the battlefield. However, there are a few tips on buff gathering that can often apply to nearly all monsters and get the buffs you're looking for. The head is almost always where you'll find the attack buff, the red buff. The legs or wings will often give you the white speed buff, and somewhere on the body, particularly around more reinforced areas, tougher parts of the monster, is where you'll most likely find the orange defensive buff. So, which buffs should you get? All of them! Yes, all of them! Before you even engage the monster with your glaive, your main goal should be getting all three buffs with your Kinsect. 
It's time consuming, and in the beginning it feels like it takes forever to get these buffs. But again, with experience and a memory greater than a goldfish, you'll know where to hit the monster with the Kinsect, get better with the timing of the commands, and be able to gather the buffs faster to finish your pre-engage ritual and get to the real fighting. Don't be discouraged when first starting out with the Kinsec Lave if it takes a few minutes for you to gather the buffs. Try practicing on a monster you're more comfortable with and take your time getting used to the timing of the commands and I promise you, you will go from minutes to seconds. Now I know what you're thinking, do I really have to have all three buffs? Can't I just get the attack buff and NO! Stop being a puss and get the buffs, scrub. Let me tell you why three is better than one. By combining all three buffs, you get more of everything. You get more attack than you would with just red. You get more defense than you would with just orange. You even get freaking earplug buffs, okay? If you want to get the best out of this weapon, you start by getting all three buffs. There are some exceptions, I'll, I'll give it that, and usually that has to do with the pressure to engage the monster sooner rather than later for the sake of time, but even then you should at least be combining two buffs, red buff and then either the orange or the white buff. The red is the most important, not simply for its attack boost, but it actually changes the way your glaive weapon behaves when attacking. Your combos are extended and your DPS with the extra hits skyrockets. So get your red buff for sure, plus at least one other buff, if not the other two, before engaging the monster. So we've established now the importance and how to gather the buffs with our Kinsack, but there's one more thing you need to do before you start swinging your glaive. Send your Kinsect out one more time, this time pressing L2 and then R2. This will mark the monster and command your Kinsect to go attack the monster, which of course increases your DPS. But wait, there's more! While your Kinsect is attacking, it's gathering a buff for you and depending on the type of Kinsect you have, you can even leave little clouds hanging around. If you make contact with the cloud with your glaive, the cloud will explode and disperse the energy it contains. This can be, for example, a poison cloud. If the monster is near and the poison cloud explodes, it can poison the monster. There's also a green healing cloud, and if you make contact with this, it will heal you. Or perhaps even an explosive blast capable of stunning monsters. So, as part of your pre-engage ritual, you should most certainly add this at the end before engaging the monster with your glaive, as it helps tremendously with your overall performance. Just a couple more notes on the Kinsect before we talk about the Glaive. The buffs you receive of course won't last forever and will need to be reapplied roughly every 60 seconds. The Kinsect won't attack forever either and will eventually come back flying automatically to you and deliver the buff it's gathered, which can help extend the duration of your buffs. It's easy to tell when your buffs have run out, particularly with the red, since your glaive will suddenly attack very differently without the combo buff. So at this point, take a step back, quickly reapply the buffs you need, send your Kinsect out again to attack, and then re-engage. That is pretty much the need to know fundamentals of the Kinsect in battle. Now, we can finally start talking about the glaive. Triangle and Circle each perform their own unique attacks, and as you'd expect, depending on the sequence you press the Triangle and Circle separately or together will result in a variety of combos. In the interest of keeping this video short, I'm going to go over one of the main combos I use in battle that deals a ton of damage. With your buffs active, press Triangle, Triangle, Circle, and Triangle. This combo takes some time, but not so long as to need to wait for your monster to be trapped or knocked down or something like that in order to complete it. As I said, there are a lot of combos you can perform with the Glaive, but this is one of the best, and just using this and some acrobatic attacks is enough to bring down an Elder Dragon like Vol in as little as 15 minutes solo. For more on different Glaive combos on the ground, 
take a visit to the training grounds with your glaive and swing it around. I'm sure you'll find some fun combos to bring to your next monster hunt. I'm purposely skipping explaining various ground combos because I want to keep this video short and I also want to get to what most people really want to know, how to do flying attacks. To get airborne, simply press R2 and X together. This will vault you up into the air and get you ready for your air assault. Like on the ground, you can press either triangle or circle or a combination of the two to land at different attacks. The attacks can be directed in the air just as they would on the ground by pressing the left thumbstick in the direction you want to attack. The triangle does a plunging spinning attack that also puts you on the ground fast. This is a great way to get out of the air and on your feet if you need to, and the damage is pretty good. The button you'll want to press most is circle, which spins your glaive around and helps you sort of float in the air while dealing a lot of damage to your target. And if you want to keep bouncing around and flying for longer, make sure you land the final swing of the circle attack. Doing this will automatically launch you back into the air and you can do it all over again. There's also the X button, which allows you to just simply dash in the air in a direction that you choose with the left thumbstick and maybe move you closer to the monster before pressing circle or triangle for an attack or maybe to get out of the way uh, of an incoming attack from the monster. Of course, this has its limits and that limit is your stamina. So if you want to maximize your flight time, make sure you've got full stamina before you vault into the air. Since we're doing so many air-based attacks, you can expect to mount your monster pretty soon. The fun part about this is that the glaive has its own special way of changing positions on the monster. While pressing the left thumbstick, instead of just sliding back and forth, you'll actually spin and slash the monster at the same time. It's a ton of fun, just watch you don't spend all your stamina out doing this without landing the final mounting attack. That pretty much wraps up the fundamentals of fighting with the Insect Glaive. As mentioned earlier, we also have to consider managing not one, but two different weapons. So let's head over to the Forge so we can take a look at how to do that and also learn more features the two weapons offer. The Glaive is pretty straightforward. Like any other weapon in Monster Hunter World, you can craft along various weapon lines to get different effects out of your Glaive. You'll find the usual selection of elements and ailments, and what's interesting is that you're not limited to wielding just one type of element in battle. Your Kinsect also has the ability to have an element assigned to it. Under the Manage Kinsects, and then... Kinsect elements is where we will find that. So I'll go to my Carnage Beetle here, for example, and we'll find a list of all of the different elements that can be applied to the Carnage Beetle. To add even more spice to the mix, depending on the Kinsect line you go through, will also determine the type of cloud your Kinsect creates. And like I mentioned earlier, this can range from poisons, heals, blasts, paralysis, and more. There are also two types of kinsects that will determine the type of damage the kinsect deals when it's hitting the monster. There's a sever for dealing slashing damage and a blunt for, well, blunt damage, similar to a hammer. And of course, each damage type has its benefits ranging from cutting tails to stunning monsters. Now here's where it gets interesting. You'll notice that there are also speed, power, and healing ratings at the bottom. The higher the number, the more powerful the Kinsect is in that regard. Now, since getting buffs is our top priority in our hunts, it's best to nurture a Kinsect that results in a high speed rating. This rating determines the speed at which the Kinsect flies back and forth when you give commands. The faster it flies, the faster you'll get your buffs. Power is also a good secondary stat to have that naturally increases the damage the Kinsect deals after you've given the attack command. And the heal stat applies to things like how much you receive if your Kinsect gathers a heal when it hits a monster, and how much heal you'll receive if you have a Kinsect that creates healing clouds. The best part of this is that you don't have to be dedicated to crafting just one Kinsect, you can craft as many of them as you want, and depending on the kind of monster that you're going to be facing, you should definitely consider which Kinsect that you want to also bring to that fight. Pay attention to the kinds of weaknesses that a monster has, bring the appropriate Kinsect with you to help manage 
either your heals or your stuns, your, the paralysis maybe, that you need to add to that fight. And you'll find that having a wide selection of kinsects to bring with your glaives and to your hunts is really, really powerful. That's gonna wrap it up for this video, guys, on the Insect Glaive here in Monster Hunter World. I absolutely love this weapon. It took me a while to, to get to this weapon, to play it, and to make this video as well. It is so much fun to play with and has now actually become my go-to weapon when dealing with uh, flying enemies. It used to be the, the heavy bow gun, which don't get me wrong, is still tons of fun. I love the wyvern snipe, the gatling version as well, it, but the, the ability to fly around with the kinsect glaive and be able to hit flying monsters without having to wait for them to land or something like that. Uh, with this weapon in particular is not only effective, but it's also tons of fun. There's really a lot more details I could get into, but again, this isn't meant to be like an all-in-one in-depth guide. I don't want to overwhelm people with, you know, a lot of details and stuff like that on this and that or whatever. This is just the, the need-to-know fundamentals, I think. But if you think you want to add something or maybe I missed something that you think is essential to learning the Kinsec Lave, then definitely leave that down in the comment section below this video. Click the like button to support Monster Hunter World videos here on the channel and keep your eyes open. I've got more coming up soon. Thanks again for watching. This is Kinetic, and I'll see you next time.